Hi, in this video, I will be talking about the GPU instance of Prefab Manager. You can use the Prefab Manager to render the Prefab instances in your scenes. This will let you get the most out of GPU instancing in Unity. To learn more about GPU instancing in general, you can check the links to the GPUI wiki page in the description down below. I will start by showing you how to add the Prefab Manager to your scenes. I will talk about its options and settings, explain what a GPUI prototype is, and also talk about the best practices when using the Prefab Manager. Before we start, let me show you the scene setup that we have here. We have a Unity sphere, and various game objects are distributed around this Unity sphere. All these game objects, as you can see here, are instances of prefabs. For the grass, we have a grass tuft mesh, which uses 22 vertices and 14 triangles for each tuft. There are two prefabs, which contain two different materials, and these materials use the GPU instancing foliage shader. Also notice that the GPU instancing option is not enabled on these materials yet. The scene does not yet contain the prefab manager. But the low amounts of polygons that we have on these grass tufts and the amount of instances in the scene of them make them a very good candidate for GPU instancing. But without any GPU instancing, let me first run the scene now. When the scene starts, you will see that this timeline object is rotating the camera around the spherical world that we have here. But more importantly, if I open the stats window, you will see that the average FPS we have for the scene without any GPU instancing is around 27 or 28 FPS here, which amounts to something like 33 milliseconds. If I go ahead and enable GPU instancing on these materials that we use for this grass here, you will see that it adds up to 5 FPS and brings the milliseconds down to something around 28 milliseconds here. This is the option you have for GPU instancing by default in Unity. Now let's go ahead and add the Prefab Manager to our scene. I have already downloaded GPU instance to this project. When you download GPI, you will see its menu under Tools GPU Instance here. There are two ways in which you can add a Prefab Manager from the Unity Editor. First is to use the Add Prefab Manager menu item here. When I click this, GPU Instancer will add me this Prefab Manager game object here. This game object is an empty Prefab Manager without any prototypes defined on it. When you add a Prefab to the Prefab Manager, it is added as a prototype. A prototype is essentially a reference to the Prefab and GPU Instancer keeps track of the prefab instances in your scene, like the grass tufts we have here, and renders them with its GPU Instancing core. So let's add the grass tuft as a prototype by dragging and dropping it to the add area here. When you do this, GPU Instancer creates a data object for this and creates a prototype of the grass tuft. You can see the reference to the original prefab and GPU Instancer has created a data object for me, which you can see here. Let's go ahead and add the grass tuft too as well. Notice that when you add prototypes like this, the prefab manager shows me the instance counts that I have for these prefabs in my scene. There are various options that you can choose, and I will go over them in a second. But for now, I will just open the shadow with original shader option here for each prototype since this is an alpha testing shader and we want to have shadows on them as well. This will be a direct comparison of what Unity is rendering and what GPU Instancer is rendering. So I will start the scene now and show you the difference in FPS. As you can see, FPS has gone up to 600 and the milliseconds have gone down to 1.5 to 1.6 here. I am getting these numbers in a GeForce GTX 1060 graphics card. You can enable and disable the Prefab Manager at runtime. And if I disable this, you can see that Unity is rendering the scene in about 35 FPS. Also notice the batch counts here. If I enable the Prefab Manager, you can see that the batch counts are around 65. If I disable this, Unity is rendering these in 368 batches. This is because by using the default GPU instancing option on the material, Unity is batching together every 500 instance in the scene into a single draw code. And if I disable this option, you can see that the batch count goes up to 40,000. 
On the other hand, when rendering with the prefab manager, GP instancer is using the indirect GP instancing method. In this method, every mesh material combination, no matter how many instances there are, amounts to a single draw call. So since there are two prototypes, there are only two draw calls being made for all the grass here. The rest are the trees and the rest of the scene. Also notice that when running with the prefab manager, the material option does not change anything anymore. This is because GP instancer is ignoring this option and using its own rendering engine instead. And with further operations being done in the GPU, such as occlusion culling and frosting culling, all executed in compute shaders, we are having almost 20 times more FPS here. Before talking further about the options and settings here, let me show you another way of adding the PFAB manager. I will firstly delete this one here and go to Tools, GP Instancer. And you can see the scene prefab importer tool here. When you open this tool, GP Instancer will show you the prefabs that you have in your project, which have instances in the current scene. It will also show you the instance counts for each prototype. The rule of thumb when using the prefab manager is to add prefabs with high instance counts in your scene. You can use the slider to set a minimum amount of instances and choose the prefabs to add here. When you're satisfied with your selection, you can choose the Import Selected Prefabs button and GP Instancer will create you a prefab manager with the selected prefabs as prototypes. Now let's talk about the options that you have in the prefab manager. The options that you see under the scene settings apply to all the prototypes that are defined in this manager. With the Auto Select Camera option selected, GP Instancer will find the first camera with the main camera tag and use it for rendering. If you disable this option, you can set up camera manually. The Use Selected Camera Only option allows GP Instancer to render only to the selected camera. It also works if the Auto Select Camera is uh, selected. If you have other cameras in your scene, for example for special effects, using this option may improve performance in your scene. However, notice that if you select this, since the scene camera is also a camera, GP Instancer will not be rendering to the scene camera during runtime, and your prototypes will not be visible in the scene view. Let me enter the play mode to demonstrate this. GP Instancer is using the information from the selected camera, and in this case the auto-selected camera. But if I take the game view to the side here, you can see that it's also rendering to the scene view, because it's also rendering to the scene camera. If I turn this option on, it will only be rendering to the current the selected camera, and the instances will disappear in the scene view. Now with the frost and culling feature, instances that are falling outside the frost and planes of the currently selected camera will not be rendered. If I take a good view like this here, and pull the camera closer to the spherical world here, you will see that the instances that are falling outside these frost and planes will not be rendered. Less instances being rendered means less geometry being rendered, and it will increase the performance for your games. If I turn this feature off, you will see that the instances outside these planes are now being rendered. Notice, however, that also the instances that are behind the sphere are not being rendered. This is because of the occlusion culling feature. With the occlusion culling feature, the instances that are not actually visible in the current camera are not being rendered. If I turn this off, you will see that the instances behind the sphere are now being rendered. Notice also that we didn't have to bake any occlusion culling maps to use with this occlusion culling feature. Since GP instancer is using the high Z occlusion culling technique, it just works out of the box. You don't have to do anything with it. Now, the minimum culling distance allows you to set a distance in which culling will not occur, no culling of any kind. So if I take the slider up and down, you will see that the distance culling, the occlusion culling and the frosting culling will not happen in this chosen distance. Also, notice that I, if I move this spherical um, world here, that the instances are staying put. To fix this, you can use the use floating origin option here. Now, 
I have to get out of the play mode here because the manager has to be reinitialized to use this option. But if I enable the floating origin option here, the prefab manager will ask me a transform on which the instances will be fixed. So if I give this spherical terrain uh, for the transform of floating origin here and run the game again, you will see that when I move this spherical world, the instances move along with it. Okay, let's pull the game view back here and continue. Under the register prefab section, you will see the instances for the prototypes that you define in this manager with their instance counts. Whenever you delete or add new instances to your scene from the Unity editor, you need to click this register instances in the scene button to update the information that is available to the prefab manager. To demonstrate this, Let's go back to the scene view first and I will quickly add some more grass tufts and I will be using Polybrush for this uh, which is a free tool that you can download from the asset store uh, distributed by Unity. But if I go to the prefab painting part here, I already added the grass tufts to this uh, prefab painting area and let's go down under this so we can see what we are painting and I will just select the sphere here and do some quick settings here and let's also enable the mirroring options here so that we can paint a bit quicker and if I paint this here it will be visible that should be enough so under the spherical world here we can see the newly added instances Let's just scale them a bit too, so that they're on the same height as the other ones. And if I go back to the prefab manager, you will see that these instances are not yet registered by the manager yet. So clicking this button, register instances in the scene, you can update the newly added instance counts and the GP instances prefab manager will be informed about the changes in the scene. Likewise, when I delete the newly added instances, the prefab manager must again be informed about this. So I click this button again and the instance counts go back to normal. Moving on, let's talk about the prototype section here. In this section, you will find prototype specific properties and settings. In the above section here, you can see the icons for each added prototype and you can switch to the text mode to see them in their prefab names. This would help if your prototypes look alike each other like we have them here. You can shift click or control click them to select them in multiples and when they are selected in multiples you can modify their settings if they are common to each prototype. Now I have already talked about one way of adding a prototype to the manager which was dragging and dropping their prefab from the project window to the add button here. You can also click this add button to choose a prefab from your project and it will be added as a prototype to the manager as well. You can also drag and drop a prefab instance from your scene and when you do that the referencing prefab of this instance will be added as a prototype to the manager again. You also have a multiple add option here. When you click this button a new window will appear and GP instance will lock the prefab manager window so that when you click somewhere else the window will not change. I will go ahead and choose three distinct prefab instances from the scene. They are all trees that surround the sphere. I will drag and drop them onto this area and GP instances will add me these three tree types as prototypes here. I can then close this window and my prefab prototypes will be ready. The first time you add a prototype to the manager it will show you the instance counts that you have for that prototype in the scene without having to register the instances in the scene with this button. However, you will notice that we have a warning message here. This is because one of the prototypes that we've just added, namely the 3Pine LP001 prototype here, has a very low instance count. 
GP instance is warning me that I won't gain much from GP instancing if I use this prototype. So I will go ahead and delete this prototype from this manager here. GP instance will ask me if I'm sure, and I'll click yes. Notice that this won't delete the prefab, but it will delete it from the prefab manager. Now what would make a good instance count for a GPI prototype would depend on various things, such as how many materials a prefab has, how many meshes it contains, and how many polygons those meshes contain, also how many LODs that the prefab has. The best thing to do would be to experiment by adding a prototype to the prefab manager and see if it increases your FPS. But 12 and 13 are in any case low instance counts, and I will just go ahead and choose these and delete them from the prefab manager. Now let's go ahead and open one of the prefabs that one of the prototypes is referencing. I'll just open the prefab. And as you can see, GP Instancer is adding the script to the prefab. The script is uh, referencing its data object and GP Instancer keeps track of this prototype by using this data object here. So you should not delete this script on your prefabs. It is for GP Instancer to work. Let me close this prefab again. Now let's talk about the rest of the prototype options that we have here. In the shadows section here, you can choose whether the prototype is shadow casting or not. You can use the original shader for shadows, or if you disable this, you can use a customized uh, and optimized fast shader for shadows for your prototypes. This would be necessary usually if, you, if your prototype has a shader that does vertex animations or has alpha testing and uh, you want shadows to look proper with the shadow caster pass that comes from the original shader. We use this here because this grass is moving and it also has alpha testing so it, it would be looking blocky if we didn't use the original shader for the shadows. You can also set a custom shadow distance and you can minimize or maximize the distance you have for the shadows for each prototype here. This option here tells GP Instancer whether to use uh, Frustum Culling for shadows or not. De by default, uh, Frustum Culling is not applied to the shadows to prevent shadow popping issues. But if you have small prototypes like this, using this option would call the shadows further increasing the performance for your scenes. You can test this and see if you need it or not. One of the things to note in general about shadows is that the shadow casting feature is one of the most impactful uh, features that can affect your performance. So in a scene like this, instead of using shadow casting for the grass, it would actually be better to use a screen space effect like ambient occlusion to have an illusion of shadows on the grass. But moving on, the culling section here has features that mostly override the options in the scene settings. These options are overridden per prototype and you can set the maximum distance that a prototype will be rendered in. You can determine whether this prototype will use frustum culling or not. You apply a frustum offset that will actually increase the space between frustum planes. Use occlusion culling or not. And set the minimum distance again like above for each prototype here. And with that I will be concluding this video. There are three more sections in the prefab manager that I haven't talked about and also the advanced actions that you can use for the manager. I will talk about these features in detail in future video tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will leave links to the GPI wiki pages that have information on the best practices when using GP Instancer and the terminology that surrounds GP Instancing in general. But if you have questions or comments, please feel free to write us from the official Unity forum or our webpage and we will be happy to help you. Thank you for watching this video.